Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera. Good morning. Uh, this lecture will cover the implementation of how the application of whatever we have uh, learned uh, on the design analysis using kinematics of rigid bodies. So we will look at one mechanism in particular and see how we can apply our knowledge to that. At the end of the lecture, there will be an assignment for you to complete. So uh, once we learn kinematics and you understand and master the art or the science of kinematics, it allows you to analyze any mechanism and to see how it works. Uh, more importantly, you can relate between the speed of the driver, the motor, and the output that you want. Okay. And in this work, we will look at two machines. Oh, sorry, only one machine on the YouTube, so that we can enjoy the knowledge that we gain from this course. Okay, so and for the assignment, for the assignment, you will carry out analysis of any mechanism or not. The mechanism will be given to you from YouTube and from where you sketch or draw the mechanism and try to put the estimated dimension and calculate the relationship between the input and the output. Yeah, a project is individual, hand written and submit before uh, May 31st. You've got about a month to do it and maximum is four pages. Okay, so in your case study, you look at the general description. You give me the de general description, uh, the construction and how it works. Tell us how, what is this thing made of and so on. And you sketch of the mechanism and its dimension. Uh, you need this dimension for you to do the kinetic model and equations. And then you solve the equations and you discuss on the practical implementation. What are the problems associated with the design and so on. I can show photos of application, brand name, price, etc. will be uh, available. Uh, and please give reference or link from whichever uh, photos or website that you uh, take it from. Okay, so let's look at this case study uh, example. I give you the link here from the YouTube. It's a double, leaf of double parallelogram mechanism. So... Uh, the picture is here. You can see that there is a. Uh, let me. So, there is a platform here. This is a platform. Okay. And this platform can go up and down. So, it's a lift. Therefore, it's called a lift. For lifting up things or people or whatever. And this platform has a double parallelogram mechanism. So I will explain to you where the double parallelogram mechanism. And there is a crank. This is a power screw. So this is a power screw. Uh, you should read something on power screw. So where the turning of this device from the crank here will cause the movement of this part. So usually this is fixed. So this is fixed relative to uh, relative to power screw. Yeah. And uh, these things can move relative to this. Yeah. So from there you can get this uh, link will start to move and then you can have the motion. Uh, of the platform. So uh, I wrote here my general description, a double parallelogram mechanism leaf. Uh, I said here the double parallelogram mechanism is being used here to create a lift. Okay, the four bar linkages, and I label the thing here O A D O A B C D E F G H, and I put some angle here theta. I put the height of the elevation of the platform as H and I label here the crank with velocity of omega. 
So it's being used uh, to create a leaf. And where are the, the parallelogram or where is the uh, thing that I can analyze? So I see here there are two four bar linkages OADC. So here is OADC, uh, OADE, OADE, and ABCD. Yeah. So that's the first four bar linkages. And then second one. So if I were to highlight it, this would be the first one. And this would be the second one. So uh, so this is the first one. This, this is the first one, OADE. And the second one is ABCD. So here, OADE, ABCD. Now, parallelogram here refers to the equal length of the arm pairs. So in order for it to become a parallelogram, so the movement of the platform is parallel to the surface uh, where it is supported. So we want uh, link AD to be parallel to BC all the time. So here is a case where you need to have equal length of the arm pair. So A, A, O, A and D, E must be of equal length. A, B must equal to C, D. Which created a parallel surface of O, E and B, C. So O, E, uh, o, E and BC will always be parallel. Also, AD will always be parallel when the platform is lifted up. The lifting of the platform depends on the angle of the link OA. So, it depends on the theta. And theta OA and uh, angle e, uh, OED and angle EOA is always the same. Yeah, That theta here and theta here and also theta here would always be same because the linkages are of the same mechanism. This is called uh, parallelogram means that the theta input and theta output here will always be the same. So, so in order to have a stable platform, uh, the lifting of the platform depends on the angle of the link OA, DE, and FG. Shown as theta in the diagram, so I have used theta here. So let me, let me perhaps link shown as theta here. If you cannot see, that's theta. So in order for, to have a stable platform, two sets of double parallelogram are used for the support of the left and right. So you not only have this one set, but also at the back, there's another set. In order for us, if there's only one, it will not be uh, that stable. And also, uh, it's also supported at three points. The platform uh, on one plane is supported at B, C, and H uh, in order to provide large bending stress. Uh, so for example, if you use a for example like if you use a four bar linkages a single platform not a double on uh, a single platform like this yeah and you put a load here and you can see that the bending force is quite large when you compare to the other design oh it's so ugly anyway So even when you put the same load, the stiffness is quite so it's not it's quite distributed. Yeah. So that one in terms of uh, stress is better for uh, three for double parallelogram. Oh my God. So I hope that you can uh, understand uh, where we come from. Okay. So that's uh, uh, why why three supports are better uh, to avoid uh, large bending stress. Next, so how it works? Uh, I think I've did, uh, uh, explained to you. I just put it here uh, in words uh, so that you, you can uh, as a guide for you when you write your report. So what I did is I capture uh, I capture three pictures, uh, one, two, and three. So folded in the middle of opening and fully extended so that all I can uh, you can uh, see how the platform is being raised so here I describe the crank rotates the power screw which turn which in turn pull the nuts Q and R to move closer to each other P and Q cannot move uh, closer to each other P and Q is fixed because of the link uh, fixed length of link AD so the only way is for the distance between nut Q and R to move and this is a turn on the nut Q to move to the right and causing the link DE to rotate together with the link OA. Similarly, link GH will also rotate causing the elevation of the platform 
uh, with double pergram, the increase of the elevation is double for the change of the angle of the link. Yeah, so it's just like a scissors lift, but here uh, you can get double lift because of the from theta. So I do the sketch of the mechanism here. Uh, this is the sketch of my mechanism. Uh, this is the way I initially label the mechanism. So I put here O, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And I, ident I identify the four bar linkages as O, A, D, E. Yeah. So I take that. And I, I identify this as my linkages and then I put it here and now I can draw uh, the mechanism OA DE and I know the speed of this link is because of the power screw and I put here this displacement X and the speed as X dot I know this is the angle theta and the speed is theta dot and this is how much uh, the platform is being raised uh, H so double of that becomes uh, 2H so OA plus AB is 2H but here is it so one good thing that you can observe here there is this triangle that is staring at us this triangle that you can use as a relationship between theta and H then that's what we are going to use in the next analysis so I've done that in the kinematic model yeah so in the kinematic model I'll draw OA AD and DE and I assume I assume the dimension of 0 0.4 meter 0 0.4 and 0 0.4 and also the angle here I assume it to be 60 degrees so from the position vector position vector D relative to O equals to OA plus D relative to A and then remember I explained to you that position vector D relative to O D relative to O can also be get we can get it from OE ED yeah D relative to E E relative to O here so when you differentiate the position vector we have the velocity vector VD relative to O equals to VA relative to O and VD relative to A so here you can also because the things that doesn't move you can take it as absolute so we can remove that and we can get VD equals to VA plus VD relative to A uh, we are not interested with the acceleration for the moment if there is question related to acceleration because I assume that here that the motor move on a steady uh, constant speed so uh, so we are not interested with, with the acceleration uh, we just want to know how fast the system is deployed so we assume the dimensions in blue so I have assumed here 0.4 meter the dimensions and theta I assume that to be 60 degrees and I, am, I use the absolute motion analysis uh, here oops sorry so I'm going to use the absolute motion analysis to find the relationship between so here I wrote H H equals to OA sine theta so when we differentiate the H over dt we get H dot H dot is how fast the thing is rising D over dt OA sine theta we will have OA theta dot cos theta uh, so, uh, however, theta dot is related to x dot. So, this is also one issue. Theta dot is related to x dot, i.e. the speed of the linear travel of the power screw. So, I wanted to find the relationship between x dot and theta dot. So, before this, so these are the data that we have. The length 0 0.4 meter, theta equals to 60. And kita assume that the speed is 0 0.1 meter per second. So point P, I also assume point P is halfway AD. A lot of assumption here, guys. So uh, not halfway AD, AO. It's AO. So look at this. The velocity is not tangential to P. So in order for us to find omega or theta dot we need to find tangential velocity so we find that component in the uh, normal to AP so we need to find this component yeah 
Yeah. So I'm looking at this component. So that component is called so called V P. So that V P is X dot X dot sine 60 degrees and the length here is 0 0.2 so uh, X dot is given to us 0 0.1 meter per second sine 60 degrees so we have the theta dot equals to 4 0 0.4 33 radian per second so the velocity of the race platform at the instance uh, we have from the previous slide is we know this equation S dot equals to theta dot OA cos 60 degrees. We know theta dot. We just calculated theta dot to be 0 0.433 times uh, OA. OA is 0 0.4. Now OA is 0 0.2. OP. This is OP, yeah? Not OA. Uh, yeah, theta dot OP. So I need to correct that. This is 0 0.2. Cos 60 degrees, so then the answer is 0 0.043. I made a mistake, so it is 0 0.043 meter per second. Because uh, the velocity is midway here. The velocity is given not at point A, but it's given at point P. So we calculate at point P, VP, and the length, we already put the length as 0 0.2. So it's 0 0.43 times 0 0.4, the speed, cos 60 V. Uh, we do have 0 0.043 meter per second. Yeah. I hope the calculation is correct. Uh, yeah. So the last part is to look at the practical implementation or availability in the market. Sometimes these designs uh, are put in the YouTube are not practical design. Some of them are practical design. So practically, people, uh, I couldn't find. Uh, the similar me mechanism in the in in the in Google, so I said here parallelogram lift is available in the market and it's quite popular as a motorcycle lift, as shown in the diagram. So I haven't provided reference, so you can. So this is for example a motorcycle lift with parallelogram. So where are the parallelogram? The parallelogram are here, one, two, three, and this is. So this is our parallelogram. So it is now pushed by this hydraulic cylinder. So uh, the double parallelogram mechanism is not readily available in the market. Perhaps of the more complicated design and fabrication uh, process. It's more complicated because of the more complicated design. So parallelogram, as you see before, there are more components and more complicated. However, the design is neat. To me, the, uh, the, the double parallelogram uh, design is neat as the actuator can be made parallel to the platform. A big advantage in where the space outside the structure is not available. Here you can see that uh, if you put the <coughs> actuator, even here the actuator here, yeah, so it has to be at a certain angle to the structure. It cannot be parallel to the platform. So I thought that, that that is one of the uh, difficult things also for us to that the space is is not readily uh, can 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 pre prevent the motion. So that's advantage and, and disadvantage. You can add to this. You can add more discussions as, such as the uh, similarity uh, or the differences or dissimilarity uh, with scissor sleeve. Remember, this is a scissor sleeve and other types of mechanism. And you can want to know why. Uh, why scissors leaves are more widely available compared to double uh, uh, double parallelogram. There must be a good reason why the market prefers it. Perhaps to me uh, there is more repeated components, more modular components you can add from two scissors to four scissors to six scissors and so on. And you can see that the structure are made the same. So repetitive structures are easy to make and you can recover the cost uh, quite fast. So uh, that's how uh, I haven't provided any reference here, so you need to add to reference. You need to add more discussions. So this is just a guide for you to think when you prepare your case study of the structures uh, given to you. Yeah. So here's your assignment. Uh, 
prepare a case study of one of the machines in the YouTube as a sign according to the final digit of your student or metric number. For example, if your metric number is 203456, then your number is 6 and you will analyze the quick return mechanism. Here, I have put the last digit of your metric number, 1 or 6, 2 or 7, 3 or 8, 4 or 9, 5 or 0. And for project 1 or 6, is your quick return mechanism. I've given you the link. You go and study and prepare a report on it. So there are five mechanism, uh, four me five mechanism, quick return mechanism, scotch yoke, four bar linkage, uh, landing gear, and four de degree of freedom uh, robot arm. It should provide you some insight on how you should apply uh, the knowledge of uh, kinematics to your design or to mechanical engineering. Okay guys, I hope you have benefited from this lecture. I uh, will see you in the next session. Thank you very much.